What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here and welcome to the second episode in my Aircraft Dissected series, wherein we delve into every single switch, knob and display in the flight deck of the Airbus A320 family to give you guys an in-depth understanding of every system present within the aircraft. Now, in the previous episode, we took a look at the left-hand column of the lower overhead panel in the flight deck, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the central column. Firstly, I highly encourage you guys to watch the first episode in this series if you haven't seen it yet, as these videos are meant to build upon each other, especially as we move further into the series. Hence, it would be highly advantageous for you guys as viewers to watch them in order. Secondly, I must say that I am not a real-world pilot. I am a 22-year-old business analytics and marketing university student with a keen passion for aviation and aerospace. Now, long-term viewers of the channel might know that I'm not much of a bush pilot or GA aircraft flyer. I love flying large airliners, which usually involves long periods of time where I put the plane on cruise and just kind of sit there. So instead of rotting in front of my monitor for hours on end, I prefer to go out and do things, whether it may be a run, doing my laundry, enjoying a meal outside, but there's always that lingering feeling about how my flight is doing, whether it's all peaceful or if I'm in an uncontrolled nosedive about to kill all of my passengers. Well, with today's sponsor, Asun Remote, you don't have to worry anymore. Asun is a free-to-download application software from macOS, Windows, and Android that allows you to remotely control your PC using your phone. As can be seen here, I can monitor my flight, control the cameras, and even move things around as needed without having to be anywhere near my monitor. And this doesn't just work for games. As a content creator, I get great peace of mind when I can monitor the status of my video being rendered on my editing software and having the ability to upload videos to YouTube without physically being at my desk or computer is an absolute godsend. The app does allow keyboard customization as well as mouse support and can also support games up to 144 FPS. So log on to the link in the description section of the video to see all of their expanded payment plans, including a pluggable device that can wake up your PC remotely. Once again, that's Awesome Remote, and you can find out more by clicking on the link in the description section of the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the flight deck of the Airbus A320 and specifically to the lower overhead panel. So continuing from this previous episode where we covered this part of the panel, as mentioned before in this video, we will go ahead and cover this column. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so before we move on further below to the electrical control panel, let's first come down here to the APU control panel and understand what it is and its function within the aircraft. The reason I'm covering this panel first is because the APU is extremely important when it comes to powering the electrical as well as air conditioning systems within the aircraft on the ground, and therefore a sound understanding of how it works is important before we delve into those aforementioned systems themselves. So the APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit and is a small jet engine situated in the tail of the aircraft which aims to provide electrical power as well as air conditioning within the aircraft when the plane is on the ground with no engines running. Electrical power is created through the motion of the APU itself as it converts the kinetic energy of its spinning motion into useful electrical energy, kind of like the RAT or RAM air turbine we explored earlier in the video as well as the engines of the aircraft themselves. As for the air conditioning aspect, the APU also provides something called bleed air, which is a supply of very hot air that goes through many filtration processes before being injected into the aircraft as breathable air for the crew and passengers, and also to be used to spin the engines to their idle speed during the engine start procedure. Now again, don't feel overwhelmed about the uses of these systems just yet. When we conduct our full flight with the aircraft, you'll see them in action and pick them up in no time. So coming to the panel itself, here we have the engine master switch. Pilots will often push this switch to be able to initiate the startup sequence for the APU, which will open up an air inlet flap in the back of the aircraft to be able to use outside air to spin up and start the APU. The light also has a fault indication to signify that there is a fault with the APU. Coming underneath, we also have the APU start switch. When the pilots have been alerted that the air inlet flap in the back of the aircraft has opened up, they'll push this button to actually start up the APU. 
Hence, an on indication signifies that the APU startup procedure has commenced, and an avail light signifies that the APU is successfully running and is therefore now available to supply power and bleed air to the aircraft for self-sustained ground operations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so coming back up now, here we have the electrical control panel, which obviously houses all of the buttons and lights pertaining to the electrical systems within the aircraft. Now, as mentioned in the previous episode, I must preface this section by saying that my knowledge of electronics and electrical components in general is not at the highest level. So what you'll learn here is purely coming from research and hours of reading and asking questions to real world Airbus pilots. Now, I feel with the electrical control panel, the best way to go about explaining the different systems is to simply go from switch to switch and explain them as we go. So starting at the top left, we have the so-called commercial switch, which when switched to the default auto position, enables operation of the aircraft's commercial electrical loads. These include everything from the cabin and cargo lights and passenger entertainment systems to the water and toilet systems, as well as drain mast ice protection systems as well. No light implies that the system is operating in the auto configuration, and an off light obviously signifies that the system has been turned off. Coming here to the center, we have the battery indicators as well as the battery switches in the middle. Starting with the battery switches themselves, these are the two main primary batteries within the aircraft and operate in the auto configuration when no lights are illuminated. Pilots will turn the batteries on immediately after connecting external power to the aircraft when starting the aircraft up from a cold and dark state. When pushed in once, the off light illuminates signifying that the batteries have been manually turned off. Finally, a fault light here implies that the charging current for the corresponding battery is outside normal limits which will often cause the battery to shut off automatically. On either side of the battery switches, we also have these battery indicators, which, as you can see, provide the battery voltage readings for each battery. The normal range for the voltage you see on these indicators is between 25 to 31 volts according to Airbus's official A320 documentation. Moving further right here, we have the AC essential feed switch. During normal operations, with no light illuminated here, the AC or alternating current essential bus is powered by electrical bus 1. However, depending on the situation, pilots can push the switch in which will allow the AC essential bus to be powered by electrical bus 2 instead and will illuminate an alternate light here. A fault light here signifies that the AC essential bus is not being electrically powered. Again, you won't normally touch this button during normal operations, so a theoretical understanding will suffice for now. Alright, coming down to this galley and cabin switch, when no light is illuminated, the electrical system to power the main galley electrical bus is armed and operational. This means that electrical power to the electrical cookers, heaters, and coffee makers in the flight attendant galleys can flow uninterruptedly. This switch, like others, also has the off and fault lights, which I won't bother explaining since I think I've explained it in detail more than 10 times at this point, so you guys get the idea. Coming further underneath, we have two identical IDG switches on either side, which stand for Integrated Drive Generators. The premise behind these is that each engine in the aircraft houses an electrical generator within it to power the aircraft mid-flight, sort of like fast rotating windmills in the air like the APU we just covered. These generators are physically wired into the engine to be able to take the kinetic energy of the engine's blade spinning motion and turn it into useful electrical energy to power the aircraft and its systems. The reason that this switch is guarded is that once the switch is pushed, the IDG is physically disconnected from that particular engine. Pilots will only use the switch in emergency situations as the disconnection of the IDG from the engine is permanent and cannot be reconnected during flight. Only ground personnel and maintenance staff on the ground can install a new IDG so you will again never use this system during normal operations. Moving inward, we have two generator switches on either side to control the electrical generators within both engines. When no lights are illuminated, the power provided by the engine-driven generators is being used to successfully power the aircraft. An off-light implies that the particular generator is de-energized and is therefore not being used and a fault light, of course, indicates a fault with that specific generator. Moving along, here we have the APU generator switch. The lights on the button operate the same way as all of the other buttons on the panel. On the other side, we also have the external power switch. 
Now when the aircraft is on the ground without any engines started, it often uses a GPU or ground power unit that acts as an external power source for the aircraft during the initial electrical power-up procedure. When a GPU is connected to the aircraft, an avail light will be shown here, thereby signifying that external power is available to use. Pilots can then push this button in order to be able to establish electrical power within the aircraft from the GPU. Finally, here in the middle, we have the main bus tie switch, which, when in the normal auto configuration, will regulate and maintain power supply to AC buses 1 and 2 in order to power all of the aircraft systems. An off light obviously signifies that the bus tie has been turned off. And that's that for the electrical control panel. These videos do take a lot of effort and time to put together, so if you guys wish to support me and help me to continue making more of these, then please subscribe to the channel. Also consider joining our free Discord community if you have any questions, and give this video a like to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're seeing. Additionally, and this is in no way necessary, you can also feel free to join our exclusive Patreon page to help support the series financially. Just as an added measure of gratitude for your support, I will also be providing the written text version of these videos for those of you who want to read the series like a book over on my Patreon page, along with other exclusive benefits, giveaways, and more in the future. Once again, that's completely optional. Okay, so we're almost done with the middle column, guys. Just a few more panels to go through. So coming below the electrical control panel, here we have the air conditioning control panel, which obviously controls the flow and circulation of air around the aircraft, both for aircraft operations as well as for breathing and comfort for the passengers and crew. Now, if you look at the actual pneumatics schematic for the air conditioning system within the aircraft, you can see how it would take me an absolute day to explain all of these components in detail. However, I think Avia Learn has an amazing video on this topic that walks you through the entire system in depth. I'll leave that video down in the description if you want to check that out and learn more. For the purposes of simplicity though, we'll just go through all the buttons and knobs and I'll explain all the subsystems within the aircraft as they come by. So starting from the top left first, we have the Pack Flow Selector. PAC stands for Pneumatic Air Cycle Kit and is responsible for taking the pressurized bleed air from a source such as the APU we discussed earlier or the engines and injecting it into the aircraft. Obviously, the air undergoes many cooling and filtration processes before being used as conditioned air for the passengers and crew. So coming back to this pack flow selector, it can be set to either low, medium, or high, each of which determine the rate at which bleed air is introduced into the cabin. It is mostly left in the middle position, however, some airlines also prefer to leave it to low as that can decrease wear and tear on the engines and provide better engine performance in the long run. Coming to the center, we have three temperature selector knobs, which allows pilots to set the temperature within the cockpit, the forward cabin, normally first class or business class, and aft cabin, which is normally the economy class. Pilots can move this knob from cold all the way to the left to hot all the way to the right. Next up, we have the hot air switch over here, which pertains to the hot air being supplied via the trim air valves to the cargo compartment of the aircraft to regulate the temperature there. No lights obviously means that the system is running nominally, and off light means that the trim air valves are closed and that the cargo compartment's temperature is unregulated. Finally, an amber fault light indicates a duct overheating. Coming further below on either side, we have the two individual pack systems, which either show no light, signifying they're on, an off light, signifying they've manually been turned off, and a fault light either when there's a problem with the pack system or when there's no source for the pack. Coming to the bottom row here, on either side, we have two engine bleed switches. As mentioned before, hot pressurized bleed air is introduced into the cabin through a source, which can either be the engines or the APU. Hence, the engine bleed switches, when turned on, signify that bleed air is indeed flowing into the aircraft uninterruptedly. Similarly, in the middle, we also have an APU bleed air switch, which pilots will manually turn on after they have successfully started up the APU. On the left of the APU bleed air switch, we have this guarded RAM air switch. Now, this switch basically allows pilots to control the operation of the physical RAM air duct within the aircraft, which is only used when both the pack systems have failed or are malfunctioning. Essentially, if both pack systems fail and are unable to regulate air within the aircraft, pilots can flip open this cover and push this button to open the RAM air inlet valve, which can provide fresh air into the cabin. 
Finally, on the right here, we have the cross bleed selector. Now, just like the cross feed valve on the fuel control panel that allows fuel from one side of the aircraft to flow to the other side, the cross bleed system does the same thing but for air instead. Leaving it to auto obviously allows the system to control itself automatically, but pilots can also turn the knob to the open or shut position to gain manual control over the cross bleed system. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the exploration of the central column on the lower overhead panel on the Airbus A320. If you made it this far, congratulations. You now have a sound understanding about every major system on this aircraft and are now aware of the functionality of practically every knob, switch, alarm, and light above the pilots in the flight deck. Now, I must also mention that all of the documentation and websites I used to research for this video are linked down below in the description section of the video, and a written text version of this video can be found exclusively on my Patreon page if you prefer to read that and understand more about this aircraft. That being said, the next video in the series will focus on the right column of the lower overhead panel, as well as the entirety of the aft overhead panel, which houses some emergency equipment and switches. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to perform a full stop landing at the like button and the subscribe button and press the bell icon for future notifications from this channel. Also, be sure to fly by the comment section and let me know if there's any questions you'd like me to answer for you. As usual, thanks for watching and thanks for flying by.